700,000 babies are born every year in the UK and some 2% of these pregnancies will be diagnosed with an abnormality, such as Down syndrome or spina bifida. There are tests that women can have to detect these disorders. Tests generally offered in early pregnancy around abnormalities and the detection of abnormalities fall into two groups. They fall into screening tests and diagnostic tests. So a screening test is a test that has low risk for the mother, can be applied to a large number of women in pregnancy and defines a group who are at higher risk for a problem rather than diagnosing the problem itself. Examples of screening tests that are used, one test relies on an ultrasound of the baby and that's done between 11 and a half weeks and 14 weeks and it's a test that measures the length of the baby and the thickness of a fluid or fat patch at the back of the neck. Software applications will allow you to look at mum's age, size of baby and measurements of the back of the neck and give a risk that that individual baby is affected by Down syndrome. But it's a risk and that risk may be one in a thousand or one in a hundred or one in five. Mm. Depending on the level of that risk, that individual mum may decide she wants to have a further test to find out if she is the one in five or if she's one of the four in five who don't have the condition. And that test would involve taking a sample from the pregnancy. One of these tests is amniocentesis. Fetal cells are collected from a sample of fluid surrounding the baby in the womb and can then be checked in a laboratory for genetic and chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome and cystic fibrosis, plus many other syndromes and diseases too. We can look at the chromosomes in those cells and say whether this baby has normal chromosomes and doesn't have Down syndrome, or whether it has an extra chromosome and has Down syndrome. This type of diagnostic testing does carry a risk of miscarriage. The miscarriage rate is generally quoted as about 1%. Um, and I think when women are looking at units, uh, it's very reasonable to ask what the miscarriage rate is. Stacey had an amniocentesis when pregnant with both Emily and Abby and recalls the fears she encountered when deciding to have the test. And the first child I had amniocentesis with, I was very scared about. I was scared for weeks in advance and I was worried about what was going to happen. One of her fears was the risk of miscarriage. The miscarriage rate will be affected by lots of things. It will be affected by the stage of pregnancy at which that woman is. It will be affected by any problems that that woman is having in her pregnancy already. For instance, if she's bleeding or has had other problems, then she might be at higher risk of losing the pregnancy in any case. And I suppose to an extent it will be affected by the number of procedures that are done within a unit and the experience of the people who are doing the procedures. I had read that what you have to do is you have to look at your um, practitioner to see you know what their rate is and you ask them and how often have they lost babies to miscarriage from the procedure and the doctor that I had at the time had was actually quite good at these sorts of things he was good at surgery he was good at, at um, those sorts. so I felt fairly confident about his abilities obviously anything that is done in medicine has a learning curve and, and if you're doing your first one or two you may be a little bit less slick and a little bit less sure than if you're doing your thousandth. The procedure is usually carried out at 14 to 16 weeks of pregnancy, so that there's still time to make a decision about whether to continue the pregnancy if the baby's been found to have an abnormality. The first thing we would do would be to scan her, show her the baby, emphasise how much of the scan is normal and show her a pool of fluid around the baby which we decided would be the target for where we would take the sample from. Having done that, we would clean her skin of her tummy. You can't make skin sterile, unfortunately, living skin, so there will always be a small chance of infection introduced by the needle and that in fact is largely what causes miscarriage with, with amniocentesis. We then put the needle through the wall of mum's tongue into that fluid and when it's there, using a syringe from that needle, we would take about 10 mils of fluid and then we could show mum, who's watching the screen almost invariably while this is going on, that we haven't touched her baby and the baby still has a heartbeat and is kicking around and that all fluid will be uh, reformed over a few hours. Fortunately, women usually experience a minimum of discomfort during this procedure. 
For most people, it's like having a blood test. Um, in fact, there are less nerve fibres on the skin of the abdomen than there are in the arm and the hand where people often have their blood tests. So mostly, it's, it's, a, it's a sharp, pricking pain, um, but it's a quick procedure, and, and most people find that it's a, a very easy to tolerate procedure. Most people's fear of it is, is greater than the actual reality. There are different theories on what to do following the procedure to minimise your risk of miscarriage. You know, in France they tell you to drink a glass of wine that afternoon. And the reason is, it's actually not as crazy as it might sound, it's because it calms down any contractions that you might have. And I sure did have a lot of irritable contractions right afterwards. It's just like... I mean, obviously you would have to ask your own doctor what they think of that advice, but I actually read another book, an American obstetrician suggested the same sort of thing. Um, and uh, with the first one I did that and my contractions calmed down, with the second one I did it and it didn't help a bit because <laughs> I think I was just nervous and stressed. Well there's a kind of an urban myth that you need to take it very easy and not do any housework and, and all of that sort of thing. And, I, and I've had um, partners say to me, how long do I have to carry my partner up the stairs for after she's had this done? Um, I think the reality is that because most miscarriage is due to infection introduced at the time of the procedure on the tip of the needle, then logically it follows that whether you go shopping that afternoon or whether you sit on a chair, your risk of infection is not altered. I think the main reason for advising people to take it easy for 24 hours is kind of psychological in that if you are unlucky and you are the 1% who goes on to have a miscarriage, if you have been to the gym that afternoon, then some people will always kind of blame themselves. And although there's no logic in that, it's very difficult to tell people that. So it's convenient for us to say, well, you know, rest for 24 hours and then you can carry on doing your normal things. Before deciding to have such a test as amniocentesis, you must be prepared for the potential tough decisions you may have to make. It's the whole thing of, what are you going to do with this information? Because I had a sister who had a Down syndrome baby and she didn't regret that. And I have to say, with the first child, I honestly don't know what I would have done. I might have aborted the child. With the second one, I wanted a baby so much. I wasn't sure I would have done anything about it, but I did want to know to prepare myself because there are some issues that you have to deal with in terms of breastfeeding, in terms of raising a child with Down syndrome, in terms of healthcare and that sort of thing. So I probably would have wanted to know for those reasons at the very least. <laughs>